Hello, this is your Commodore, Ty Coles here, with a quick movie review. This one will be the 1981 slasher flick, My Bloody Valentine, to celebrate, one, the 40th year anniversary of the film, and two, to celebrate Valentine's Day, because you can't say I love you without some heart and blood. Directed by George Milka, I think that's how you pronounce his name, starring Paul Kilman, Lloyd Heller, Peter Culper, and Neil Affleck. Released on February 11th of 1981, the running time is about 93 minutes, but many but about 9 minutes were cut from the film because they were too graphic, which were pretty much every single kill was cut from the film. It was filmed in Canada, specifically Sydney Mines, Nova Scotia. Legitimately, they filmed this in an actual mine and city. The budget was $2.3 million, and it grossed $5.7 million in the box office. A fun little fact here. Quentin Tarantino has come out and has named My Bloody Valentine as his all-time favorite slasher film. So, let's get the body count going, and if you want to have a little fun, let's play a little ga drinking game. Every time they say Harry in the movie, you take a drink. It starts off with... Two miners going down into the mine. It looks like they're going to work, but actually, and one ends up being a ridiculously hot blonde, and it looks like they're going down in the mine, if you know what I mean. But... It's a swerve, and she ends up being the first kill. We get her title sequence, and we cut to the movie. We're in the mine with a bunch of the miners, and they're talking about the upcoming Valentine's Day dance. As they're going back to this town, Valentine's Bluff, which is, in fact, Sydney Mines in real life, we get some ridiculously stupid music, but some nice shots of the mine. So, the miners meet up with their girlfriends, and we are getting ready for the dance. This is the first dance they have hosted in 20 years. Okay. It's me. Power, stay away from me. Hi, babe. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> we also have a second plot of a love triangle between Sarah, Axel, and the mayor's son himself, TJ, who failed, who came back to the town after he failed when he went out west. Not my fault he couldn't make it on his own. But now that he's back here, he's my son and he's working in the mine. The mayor then gets, then, a mysterious box is left with a, a dire warning and a bloody heart in the box. From the heart comes a warning filled with bloody good cheer. Remember what happened as the 14th draws near. <gasps> so, we're at the bar, the cage... We are given the story of Harry Warden. We find out that the dance was a huge thing back in the town. It was a very big tradition and everyone went but a few miners because they were working. There were two supervisors and five miners. The two supervisors left without checking methane levels and the miners down below were caught in an explosion because of it. Many people tried to go rescue them. Only one was found alive. Harry Warden who resorted to cannibalism to survive and went completely batshit insane. <laughs> the following year, he killed both of those supervisors and left their hearts in chocolate boxes at the dance. The year before, then he cut out their hearts and stuffed them in heart-shaped candy boxes. That night at the dance, 
fell into boxes, blood dripping out the sides. And told them, if you ever have another dance, there will be death. Every February 14th, Harry comes back to town. His pickaxe stained with blood just for someone to kill. Should they not heed his warning? No one's taking the bartender Happy's story seriously. So they continue on with the dance. Then we go to the person that was spearheading the dance, Mabel, and she is killed. Roses are red, violets are blue. One is dead, and so are you. They go check up what's happening with Harry, and they cannot find any information about the guy. Harry Warden, he was committed under court order approximately 20 years ago. Well, I'm afraid I have no records of a Harry Warden, past or present. Uh-oh, that does not sound good. So there's, they give him three options of what might have happened to him. Now, if this Harry Warden was committed, as you say, then he's simply no longer here. And if I have no records on him, I have to assume that he's transferred, he's released, or he's on the slab. One of three, take your pick. They cancel the dance. The love triangle now starts to get a little bit more physical. Whereas then we get TJ, he hooks up with Sarah, if you want to call it that way, and tells her, her his feelings about what happened and everything. And he does it in the most Canadian way possible. I honestly didn't think you were ever coming back. You just left me here. Sarah, please. I'm sorry. I'm so damn sorry. And they keep planning a party in the mine. And ignoring Happy's advice for them not to do it. Nah, pal. Piss on Harry Warden and that damn old legend. We're gonna have ourselves a party. It's like they're asking to be killed right now. Because they didn't take his advice, Happy decides to pull a prank on them, but it ends up backfiring on him, and he gets killed by Harry with a pick straight through the eye. <laughs> This is one of the very many scenes that got cut due to the graphicness of it. So, if you want to see what the death actually looked like, I will share a, de a link to all the deaths that happened in this movie in the description below. So, the party begins. <laughs> it's about to get bloody on Valentine's, people. Dave. His head is placed in a boiling pot of water with hot dogs. The girl, Sylvia, ends up being impaled on a shower head. Horace, Patty, Sarah, Howard, Mike, and Harlot decide they want to go down in the mines to play around. Oh boy, things are about to get worse. So, body counts continue to rise. Mike and Harlot, and they are impaled by a drill. Horace gets shot in the head, not once, but twice, with a nail gun. The rest of the people that were at the party, they booted out of there. Except for TJ and Axel, because they realize Sarah and them are down in the mine, so they have to go grab them. Axel, Patty, TJ, and Sarah manage to meet each other, and they try to find their way out of the mine. They realize the elevator has been sabotaged, so they gotta find another way up. So they find this ladder to get up the shaft, and while climbing the ladder, they find Howard's dead body... And he is beheaded as his... So, 
his body just falls straight down the shaft. Well, TJ goes one way, the girls go the other way, and Patty is killed. This leaves Sarah the only, the last female standing. So Sarah meets up with Tej, and here comes Harry after them. We get them chasing each other on a minecart as they go up. As in the meantime, the sheriff and the townsfolk are coming down to meet to help them in the same tunnel. Harry and Teach start to fight. They fall off the cart. They get off the cart. And we finally get the battle of the shovel versus the pickaxe. They fight a little more. And it's revealed that it's not Harry. It's Axel. <laughs> Axel. The reason why is because in the original killings... One of those supervisors that Harry killed was Axel's father. <laughs> TJ and Sarah are safely found, and Axel's completely lost his mind as he runs deeper into the mine. Harry, I'm coming. This whole fucking town is going to die. We're coming back, you bastards. <laughs> Sarah. We also learn the fate of Harry Warden, that he died five years prior. But did he really die? Oof. This was not well received when it first came out, but it has grown to become a cult classic. It received a reboot in 2009. So, with all the new, like redoing all the old genres, why not continue My Bloody Valentine? Let's look at the numbers. Kill count. 16 kills for the drinking game wow you'll be pretty drunk at the end of this movie if you want you can always check it out it's available on prime video you can also catch various scenes on youtube and overall a solid addition to the slasher genre so for your commodore tag holes live long and prosper and have a happy valentine's day people healing frequencies close Thank you for watching the video. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, watch one of my other videos, and if you can show your support by donating to my PayPal. So for Commodore Tide, live long and prosper all. And for now, until next time, the hail and frequencies are closed.